Good morning, good morning, good morning. I have a lot to go over in this middle of the night broadcast about the Iran war, the next moves, Donald Trump and his hush money trial. The Democrats expose themselves and their true agenda and wishes for Donald Trump. Plus, Zelensky is butthurt that the United States is directly intervening on behalf of Israel while abandoning Ukraine over to Vladimir Putin. I've got a lot to go through, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Good morning, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for being on. Democrats finally exposed their true plans with Donald Trump, and they've set a trap on both sides of it. Biden tells Israel he won't support their revenge attack on Iran and begs Netanyahu to let it go. Trump's first criminal trial starts, and it's going to be a long slog. Plus, Marjorie Taylor Greene confirms what I've been telling you all along, that the government is stealing your money. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out because when you hit that like button, it tells YouTube to send the truth out to more and more people. Now, over the weekend, as I told you earlier today, Iran launched a combination of 300 attack drones and missiles directly at Israel. As the sound of air raid sirens filled the air, Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system shot down Iran's assault. In total, about 99% of all of the drones and missiles were defended against. Uh, but after studying the situation, this may be what Iran wanted to happen. It does look like, however, nine missiles were able to get through and strike a military installation. Now, in my opinion, this attack looks more symbolic than aggressive. The missiles were launched from Iran and not uh, a closer ally, which showcases how personal this attack was, but how ineffective it was. If Iran really wanted to cause maximum damage, they would have launched these missiles from a closer proximity. They also wouldn't have given the Pentagon a 72-hour heads up so that they could start coordinating with the country of Jordan on how to shoot things down. I go into great depth on my news interview from earlier today with Colonel Tony Schaefer. I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video. Now, after that attack was squashed, President Joe Biden seemed to backtrack on his ironclad promise to back uh, Israel. While speaking with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Biden claimed the United States would not aid Israel in a retaliatory attack against Iran. In reference to his success at stopping the large barrage of missiles, Biden told Netanyahu, you won a victory today. Be content with the victory. However, Netanyahu basically told Biden to shove it and that they are going to attack Iran. Now, to be fair, U.S. forces did aid Israel in their defensive measures, so his promise wasn't completely in vain. However, this show of restraint will likely be seen as a form of weakness by Iran. With that being said, Israel has decided to ignore Biden's advice and says that they will plan an even more aggressive attack on Tehran. So I'll be covering that. Um, it's pretty scary that this thing is starting to build momentum. Uh, Turkey is now saying, America, don't enter our space. Uh, we are not going to back you as a NATO partner. Um, so things, things could absolutely uh, explode in the Middle East region over the next few days. Now, after the October 7th attack by Hamas, it has now come to light that President Biden let United Nations sanctions on Iran missile expire just days after Israel was attacked. The expiration date was October 18th, which means that Biden had roughly 10 or 11 days to act against Iran. Now, the United States knew with certainty that Hamas was being financially backed and intelligence provided by the country of Iran. So they had every reason to extend this, but Biden chose not to extend the sanctions on Iran. If he had, this whole thing would likely never have happened. 
So Biden's failure to act led to everybody being on pins and needles over the last 48 hours about this war situation. So Biden gave Iran permission to fire on Israel and then loaded them up with billions of dollars in unfrozen funds and hundreds of billions of dollars in oil contracts from the country of China. So this whole thing could have been prevented, but all of Biden's actions have been making Iran stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, seizing on the opportunity, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has used Israel's defensive success as proof for why more aid should immediately be sent to Ukraine. Zelensky stated the joint efforts of Israel and its allies, which, by the way, are also our allies, were very successful. We see that when allies act together and remain really coordinated, not a single missile hit the target in Israel. Not one missile. And all we ask of our partner is, even if you cannot act in the way you acted for Israel, give us what is needed and we will do the rest ourselves. I mean, dang. Imagine being Ukraine. Imagine being Volodymyr Zelensky and watching the U.S. military save Israel, use their own military and weaponry to rescue Israel, and then be told, we're not putting boots on the ground to fight Putin. We're, we're not going to war with Russia. It's going to have to remain a proxy war. I mean, that, that has to sting, right? Uh, and what Zelensky isn't realizing is the United States could continue to help, but is it throwing bad money after good? And, and after all, you can't beat Vladimir Putin with just money. You have to have enough weapons. And right now, the United States doesn't have enough weapons, and he's he's failing to mention that part. Now, back in U.S. Congress, House Speaker Mike Johnson has revealed that he's been working on a $95 billion aid package for Ukraine and Israel. During an interview with Fox News, Johnson affirmed that Republicans want to support Israel, but failed to disclose if any of that money would make it to Ukraine. But there is some good news for Ukraine because Johnson has seemingly found a way to keep both parties happy. During another interview with Fox News, Mike Johnson uh, um, stated that he and former President Donald Trump have 100% agreement that Ukraine should be given more money, but in the form of a loan. After being asked about Trump's support for a loan to Ukraine, Johnson stated, I had a great visit with Trump on Friday, and he and I are 100% united on these big agenda items. So it does look like Republicans are going to get more money to Ukraine, even though they got no additional money or help to the southern border. So on the one hand, they failed miserably, and on the other hand, they're going to take our money and give it to a war that's already lost. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. They just love to steal our money. Now, in regards to Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene's efforts to remove Mike Johnson from office, he seemed unfazed and called her efforts a major distraction. He stated, what Marjorie has done with a motion to vacate is not helpful for our party, for our mission to save the country. Because if we don't grow the House majority, keep the House majority, win the Senate, and win back the White House for President Trump, we are going to lose the Republic. Now, if I was in his shoes and had Trump's support, I probably wouldn't be phased by Marjorie Taylor Greene either, but he should pay attention because she has a greater pulse on what's going on with Republican voters than most Republican leaders. Now, speaking of Donald Trump, his hush money criminal trial has finally started. While walking into the courtroom, Donald Trump was captured saying he's honored that Democrats have gone so far out of their way to politically persecute him. He stated, when I walk into that courtroom, I know I will have the love of 200 million Americans behind me, and I will be fighting for the freedom of 325 million Americans. Now, in total, Donald Trump is facing 34 counts of falsifying business records a misdemeanor elevated to a felony in New York 
in order to get Donald Trump. It's the first time it's ever been done. Now, Trump could see jail time if convicted, but it's not clear if Democrats will actually go through with it because they are terrified it will make him even more popular. However, radical left Trump-hating judge Juan Mershon showed his cards today. He warned Donald Trump that he had better be in court every single day for the next six to eight weeks or he would be arrested. Now, he's exposed his plan. The plan is to keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail for the next six to eight weeks. If Trump is tied up in court trying to avoid uh, jail, then he can't be out telling his voters what he's going to do to improve the country. So they're basically trying to get him on both ends. Uh, we're going to send you to jail uh, or we're going to convict you and send you to jail. They, they really are trying to get him. Now, let me know if you think I'm on to something. Is the plan to keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail to give Joe Biden, who's extremely unpopular, an advantage and essentially threatening to jail Trump if he doesn't do exactly what they say? Let, let me know in the comments. Uh, do you think that this is what they're doing? To me, this is like they are 100% showing their hand, flashing that they believe they have a royal flush, they've got Trump, uh, and that they're going to jail him. I, I, think, I think this is exactly what their plan is. They, they have now shown their hand. But it gets worse. Judge Juan Mershon is blocking Donald Trump from going to his son, Barron Trump's graduation ceremony, or else he will send him to jail. Donald Trump wrote, who will explain for me to my wonderful son, Barron, who is a great student at a fantastic school that his dad will likely not be allowed to attend his graduation ceremony? something that we have been talking about for years because a seriously conflicted and corrupt New York state judge wants me in criminal criminal court on bogus Biden case, which according to virtually all legal scholars and pundits has no merit and should never have been brought. This fake case is solely meant to attack crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, me, who is seriously leading him in the polls for purposes of election interference. The judge, Juan Mershon, is preventing me from proudly attending my son's graduation. Seems very unfair, doesn't it? But this whole event is unfair. Every one of the many fake cases that are perpetuated by the White House in order to help the worst president in history by far get reelected are unjust scams. We won't let that happen. We will make America great again. Now, imagine missing your child's graduation over a misdemeanor that was elevated to a felony for the first time ever in order to get you because you're beating the current president in polling. It's crazy to me. This is absolute insanity. People can see right through this, but I feel like there's nothing we can do. Trump's just going to have to wait this out and then probably appeal it and then appeal it again to the Supreme Court. All they're trying to do is financially bankrupt him, to embarrass him, try to split up his marriage, separate him from his children, block memories that he should be making with his family. It's wild. It's absolutely wild to me. But it gets worse. Trump also wrote, in addition to being prohibited from attending my son Barron's high school graduation, I have just learned that the highly biased judge in the Soros-appointed D.A. Alvin Bragg's witch hunt case will not allow me to attend the historic presidential immunity argument in front of the United States court on Thursday, April 25th. This shows such great disdain and disrespect for our nation's highest court. 
especially for a topic so important as presidential immunity, without which our country would never be the same. So this is literally a landmark case going to the Supreme Court. And the person for which it's going to the Supreme Court is now being told, if you go to the Supreme Court, you will be jailed. You will be thrown in jail. If you go to your son's graduation, you will be thrown in jail. It's crazy. It's crazy. Steven, coming to you from Spain. I watch you every day. Hello. Thank you. Mucho gusto. Gracias por mirar mi canal. Thanks for watching the channel. All right. Now, listen to this. Elon Musk tweeted that this is corruption, that this is obviously the law being used against somebody. This is lawfare. I mean, th this is such obvious corruption. Persecution. Election interference. They are losing so bad that they literally are trying to jail Donald Trump. Biden is that pathetic. He, he is a loser. He's losing on the economy. He's losing on the border. He's losing on safety. Our dollar loses value every damn day. This guy's a total loser. And yet he's got the court on his side. He's got the FBI on his side, the Department of Justice on his side. He's literally using them like a mafia boss would use underlings. And it's all being ordered by Joe Biden and his mob. He is the most corrupt president in our lifetime. Good thing we all paid our taxes today to a corrupt government. I'm sure glad my stolen money gets to go to illegals and foreigners and endless wars instead of to you, my fellow Americans. Disgusts me. In fact, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia said something on this very topic today. She said, today is tax day. Everyone is having to pay the IRS to fund a government that doesn't care about fixing problems in America. Instead, we are funding endless foreign wars in countries most Americans can't find on a map. Let me repeat my favorite line. Everyone is having to pay the IRS to fund a government that doesn't care about fixing problems in America. If you agree with her, I want you to write true in the chat. It's absolutely true. I don't mind paying taxes. Roads have to be built. Bridges have to be repaired. Schools need teachers. But my gosh, they steal our money and then they give it away or they go murder people with our money. Millions of people have died with your money and my money as the military industrial complex is addicted to blood. It's absolutely gross to me. Ah. All right, today was a wild day. San Francisco's famous Golden Gate Bridge made headlines today after pro-Palestinian protesters blocked traffic. In pictures of the event, protesters can be seen holding large banners that state, block the world for Gaza while standing in front of massive traffic. Do these people understand that blocking everyday people from getting to work doesn't do a damn thing for people in Gaza? It shocks me. I hate, I absolutely hate when these, these protesters block the freeway or bridges they block ambulances and the police and firefighters, people trying to get to the hospital to have a baby. These losers literally make life difficult and you have to almost run them over. And then what happens? They get defended in court, that it's your fault that they got hit by your car, that it's your fault that your baby died on the way to the hospital. It's absolute craziness to me. These. These uh, green agenda, I mean, these aren't even tree-hugging hippies. These are losers. Most of them have no job. And then they block traffic and make life hell for everybody else. 
But you know what? They tried this down in Florida. And you know what the police do? They immediately throw them out of the street. If they go back into the street, boom, you get arrested and thrown in jail for 15 years. That's how you treat these people. You can't, you literally cannot have people interrupting the flow of traffic. I don't care if you hate oil. I don't care if you want solar everything. I don't care if you want windmills. You do not have the right to obstruct traffic. This, this should be a law in every single state. You cannot block bridges. You cannot block trains. You cannot block the freeway. You can't block ambulances. It should be illegal. It should be absolutely illegal. Okay, here's my uh, here's my final story, and I want to hear from you guys in the chat. RFK Jr. is now telling everyone that Donald Trump asked him to be his vice president, and he rejected Trump, saying he would never work with him, and that he declined because he's going to beat Trump. Now, I want to know, do you guys think that's true, or do you think it's false? I do not think that Donald Trump asked RFK Jr. to be his running mate. I think Trump likes him. I think maybe there could be a place for him in his cabinet. But did Trump call him and say, will you be my vice president? And he gets rejected. I don't think that's true. You know, what is true, though, is RFK Jr. asked Tulsi Gabbard to be his vice president, and she told him, no, thanks. I'll sit this one out. And so he ends up picking the ex-wife of the person that started Google. I I, I like RFK Jr. I, I think he's probably a good person, but I, I do not believe that this is a true story. Maybe somebody said, hey, would you ever consider that? That's very different than getting a phone call from Donald Trump, clearing it through Secret Service, and then getting on the phone and him saying, hey, uh, Bobby, will you be my vice president? I, I think it's a fake story. I, I don't know why RFK Jr. would lie. He's built his entire career on being a truth teller. I like what he has to say about COVID and big pharma and corporate capture. I've tried to get him on my show many times. But I don't know. I, I think it's a I think it's a made up story. Uh, I think what he was really trying to do is get the point across that I will never work for Donald Trump. Well, guess what? Any independence that you thought you were going to sway from the Republican thinking, you just lost all of them. So why don't you go try to get some of the 27 people, 27% of people who believe it's okay to still be a Democrat? I think it's a made up story. No way he did not do that. I agree. False story. RFK for FDA. Yes, yes. He Listen, I think he's a good person. I think he would make a great attorney general. I think he would uh, clean up the corporate capture. Big Pharma has taken over our country. The military industrial complex has taken over our country. Uh, Wall Street has taken over our country. There, there's so much that needs to be the swamp needs to be drained, right? And I think RFK Jr. could do that, but I do not believe Donald Trump called him and said, Bobby, will you be my vice president? I, I just don't believe it. But maybe that maybe that story will come out and I'm willing to say I was wrong because if I ever am wrong, I'm willing to admit that, but I don't think that I am in this case. All right, let me know in the chat, are you up late or are you just waking up? Maybe type late or waking up. Want to hear from you guys. I'm about ready to go to bed. But I wanted to come on and late at work, up late, 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 late. Just waking up, waking up. All right. So it's, it's a mix. It's an absolute mix. Up as usual. <laughs> oh, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much for, for coming on. I'm going to uh, go to bed so that I can wake up early. And I've got a great interview to share with you guys uh, tomorrow that I'll be doing. Also, lots and lots of research. I uh, appreciate you guys 
using this channel as a way to stay in the loop on what's really going on in our country. Thank you so much. Stay amazing. And I'll see you on the next video.